All right, so the next topic we're gonna talk about is polarity of bonds. So you have covalent bonds, you could have even electron sharing or uneven electron sharing. It just depends on the electronegativity of the two atoms. So there's two atoms that are associated with a bond, they each throw in an electron, and then they engage in essentially a game of tug of war. They're fighting over the electron and the strength, how good they are at that game of tug of war depends on the electronegativity of the element of the atom. And so if you remember the general trends, as you go to the right and up, you become more electronegative, excluding the uh, noble gases. So fluorine would be the ele most electronegative element, and then the least would be francium, down on the bottom left. And, uh, you know, we talked about those trends, at least in my 221, and we can add numbers to them in this course, and smart work will definitely make you do that. And so you want to familiarize yourself with table, or sorry, figure 8.6 in your textbook. That will actually give numerical values. So you'd be like, oh, here's the electronegativity of fluorine versus something else. And essentially just the larger the number, the better, the lower, the worse. Metals have very, very low electronegativity. They're not really gonna fight for those electrons. And so they don't typically engage in covalent bonding. They tend to form ionic compounds as we talked about earlier. But, you know, Every now and again, something weird happens. So you can find a match where the electronegativity is close enough that they will share, but that's weird. And like, like I said, building those chemical instincts, um, you really don't uh, want to worry about that too much right now. There's the odd case. Um, so polar covalent bonds, so you have that sharing of electrons, but the electrons are not being shared equally. That is a polar bond. That is a game of tug of war where one side is winning overall. It's not a total victory where they run off with the rope. That'd be an ionic compound. But typically we have two non-metals with mismatched um, electronegativities. And then um, if you don't have polarity, well, what do we call that? Non-polar. So a non-polar covalent bond are when the electrons are shared equally. So typically this will be between two of the same element like carbon and carbon or nitrogen and nitrogen, oxygen and oxygen. So both elements in the bond are the same. And there's some, you know, different definitions. Your book has a really, really strict definition, basically delta En of zero. So the difference in electronegativity has to be zero. So they have to be matching elements. Um, but oftentimes something like carbon and hydrogen is considered a nonpolar bond. It's usually a little bit of wiggle room in there. Your book's a little unusual there. So just a heads up on that. But an example of a polar bond it would be like, um, you know, a bond between carbon and chlorine. Carbon is less electronegative than chlorine. Chlorine's gonna hog those electrons, it's more electronegative. The, they're gonna share, but not equally. Uh, versus, you know, something like carbon and carbon. Those are the same. And so they are matching electronegativity. They're gonna share electrons, perfectly equally, this would be a non-polar bond. All right, so the next detail to talk about with this is um, the fact that if you go far enough, that difference in negativity gets large enough, excuse me, just starting out here, then you have an ionic compound. So if you have a very large difference, in electronegativity, that's an ionic compound. One side grabs the rope, tug of war, runs off with it. There is no sharing, just give me that, gone. And then the last thing to talk about is when we have these polar bonds, we can label them. And so we can label what we call a dipole. And so there's two ways of doing this. The first is with an arrow and it will point to the more electronegative element with a little positive side on the tail. And so this is saying this is a little bit positive and the electrons are shading towards the chlorine. That's the first option. Or we can go delta minus, delta plus. That means there's a partial negative charge over here, partial positive charge over there. Either one is fine with me, doesn't really matter. Um, but just be familiar if you look at diagrams or whatever. And so what we are doing 
is we are labeling the polarity slash the dipole. And we call it a dipole because there's two poles. There's a positive one and a negative one. So there's an area of positive charge, an area of negative charge. That creates two poles. So that's why we call it a dipole. And to do that, we can use the arrow or these deltas, like I said. And we're going to use this idea in chapter 9 um, to talk about polarity of molecules. But for now, it's just, you know, is it bond polar or nonpolar or is it ionic? Do you get a really big difference in uh, your electronegativity? And so that's like over, I think your book says a difference of more than 2.5. And typically, when you look at your periodic table, you can see, oh, it's going to be a metal and a nonmetal. Now, the truth of uh, it all is that massive, there's a massive gray area. It, it's really impossible to draw a line. Different authors of different textbooks draw that line in different places. And so I'll try not to stress that too much. But in general, mismatched nonmetals, polar. Matching nonmetals, nonpolar. Every now and again, you'll see carbon and hydrogen. That's typically nonpolar too. And then, you know, if you see a metal and nonmetal, you get a big difference. Ionic. That's what we're looking at here. All right. So, that's it for this section. And uh, sorry it took me so long to get this video back up. I had recorded it with the other ones. You might notice my shirt has changed. It will change back in the next video. And that's because I forgot to turn my mic on. So, I had a wonderful video with no audio. So, I'm back today. You'll notice that I'll be wearing these same clothes for chapter 9 when we get into the videos where I'm not screen capturing. So, enjoy. Enjoy.